Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now yesterday I showed you how I had transformed an old office PC into a gaming system. One key component included in the upgrades was this GTX 1060, the Gigabyte WinForce OC 1060 6 gig to be more precise. Although it offered decent gaming performance in pairing with an old i7, in today's one I wanted to see what this card can really do. After all, it is still the most popular graphics card according to the Steam hardware survey and it's been this way for months, maybe years. The 1060 was always a popular card, it was a $250 GPU that could play anything with respectable graphic settings, and since its launch in 2016 it got cheaper and cheaper to buy, especially second hand. Prices went up during the recent GPU shortage like everything else, and those with a 1060 might have halted any upgrade plans. When the cost of used cards stagnated or started going down again, the 1060 became a desirable option, hence its continued popularity. But is it really still worth it? We looked at the 3GB card not long ago which has a couple of obvious limitations, i.e. less CUDA cores and memory, but the 6GB version? Well let's take a look. What I've done today is test each game twice. First of all I decided to see how high we could push the graphics settings and still hit at least 30fps, and then I wanted to talk about the settings needed for 60fps. I know some of you are fine with 30 and some of you insist on 60 so this way we cover both angles. For at least 30 FPS in Cyberpunk I went for the medium preset with medium crowds and high textures. I always work with presets for simplicity sake but of course you'd probably want to mess with certain settings individually as some are more intensive than others. Medium meant that the game rarely dipped below 30 yet still looked good and ran better than high which wasn't really worth it to be honest. For 60 frames per second I'd suggest the low preset with FSR enabled. This was set to ultra quality and is almost indistinguishable from native 1920x1080, especially once sharpening is applied via the game's built in option. Like most first person titles, Cyberpunk does feel a lot better at 60 FPS, but driving in third person feels fine at 30, at least to me. Still, I'd most likely play with FSR on for 60 FPS. I'd sooner enable it than drop the native resolution too. Far Cry 6 can be set to Ultra for a plus 30fps experience even during intense firefights, again it doesn't feel great because it's a first person game, but once again this is all about personal preference and if you're used to playing at 30fps, perhaps because you've come from a PS4 or Xbox One, then this will likely feel better and look better too. 60 frames per second is achievable by setting the quality preset to low. FSR is available in this game but I wouldn't say it's necessary despite some drops below 60. It's there if you want to ensure that the percentile lows stay a bit higher but I'd probably leave it off. HD textures are also off as I never installed them. I don't think they make much sense even with high end graphics cards but if you've got a $1000 GPU that's barely breaking a sweat then you might as well enable them. Just don't bother if you've got a 1060. God of War with the highest preset actually fell below 30fps quite often so dropping things to high made the most sense. Instead of changing the presets you could play about with individual settings as I mentioned because it might be a single visual option that's causing problems but sticking to presets for me makes things simpler to convey in a video. That said when I decided to try and target 60fps here I did leave one option at low. Original is the best preset for 60fps. I think these settings are equivalent to the PS4, I think that's what's meant by original. The atmospheric setting was the option I left at low because I noticed that it seemed to mean the difference between averaging over 60 and well, not averaging over 60 with this card. The game still looks really good though, and so far it's clear to see why the 1060 is still so popular. It's certainly holding up nicely. Elden Ring at maximum can cause some issues, particularly with the 1.1% lows. It's still playable and looks great though. This is one of those games I didn't think I'd like, and then I bought it for PS5 as well, and since then the disc hasn't left the console. I haven't really progressed in the PC version here, but I still play it from time to time, and I'd certainly recommend it. While max settings are doable on the 1060, the medium preset is best suited for hitting the 60fps cap. Foresty areas will still cause some dips, but for the most part the game will hit 60fps and provide a fairly solid experience most of the time. I spent more time dying than playing, which is 
always the case, and I never thought I'd have so much fun doing so. The extreme preset is a little much for the 1060 in Forza Horizon 5 with dips below 30. That said, it does seem a bit pointless when Ultra looks just as good and runs a lot better. Ultra settings with everything left at their defaults will grant us a 51 FPS average. I have a feeling a couple of adjustments would bring this up to 60 with very little effort, but as it is the performance is good and the percentile numbers are solid too. No nasty dips or stutters here. The high preset also looks really nice, there isn't much difference in visual fidelity here either, and this is what you'd want to use for a plus 60 FPS average. A comfortable 60 FPS average too, with little worry about heavy dips or frame time issues. The average 1 and 0.1% lows were all above 60 and I'd suggest sticking with high just to create a nice safety buffer for when you drive through those little towns and villages that can cause some unexpected performance loss, especially during multi-competitor races. With Grand Theft Auto 5 you can either max out the settings and keep MSAA off for a plus 30 and close to 60 FPS experience or keep MSAA disabled entirely for a constant plus 60 average. For the first test I had everything turned up to its highest including advanced options from the secondary graphics menu. MSAA was set to X4 which is probably unnecessary but it does alleviate those pesky jagged edges. I usually keep it turned off entirely and just keep FXAA enabled like I've done for the 60 frames per second test here, but it's up to you. You could probably set the MSAA option to X2 instead and still get over 60 FPS with a 6 gig 1060. There's a lot of sixes, not only in this sentence, but in the entire video as well. Finally, it's Fortnite as an online competitive game. I decided it would be best to just aim for as many frames as possible right off the bat. This is why I went for the low settings, but I kept the anti-aliasing at high and the epic view distance enabled. Someone said to me the other day that high settings aren't really worth it in games like this, and that sort of stuck with me. It still looks good at low, but when the intention is to wipe out as many enemy players as possible before they wipe you out, achieving a higher frame rate seems to make more sense than just bumping up the visuals. But there we go. The 1060 is still a decent card, and there's really not much else to say. Keep an eye on the used price and compare it to the cost of other similar performing GPUs where you live, such as cards from AMD, um, because it's interesting to compare things in terms of value for money, because you always want to make sure you're getting the best. For what you can afford to spend, of course. As for this one then, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the 6 gig 1060 in 2022. Still a very respectable card, and it's clear to see why it's still so popular. Thank you for watching if you enjoyed it leave a like leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one